I think I'm live. Perfect. Hi guys. Oh, here we go. People are joining. So first thing, I'm just going to turn off the comments just so that everyone will be able to see my full body for our variation class today. And then I'll turn them back on at the end. So welcome guys. My name is Chelsea Meese and I'm a first soloist with the National Ballet of Canada and welcome to my backyard. Uh, today will be uh, a variation lesson, which is quite exciting. It's the first one that we've done here on the National Ballet's live Instagram. And today we are going to learn the dying swan. So this is an iconic variation that I'm sure most of you have seen or heard of before. I believe it was first performed in 1905. It was originally choreographed by Mikhail Fokin for the infamous Anna Pav Pavlova, <laughs> excuse me. And today we're going to learn an interpretation that was taught to me by uh, one of Canada's great ballerinas, Evelyn Hart. And let's get started. So the first thing, how about we just do some neck circle warm ups? because normally we'd, we would have done a whole class before this and some shoulder circles. In my opinion, the Dying Swan is a um, what you call quintessential ballerina variation. So it doesn't have any big, big jumps or um, extravagant pirouettes or high legs. It's really all about the subtlety and the nuance um, the interpretation basically of what the ballerina brings to the solo. So I'm starting to get a bit warmer now, which is great. So now let's just warm up with some swan port de bras. So you can see the angle here. Just I'm thinking of almost like circles with my elbow and letting my wrist follow draping behind. So that's it practicing our swan arms all the way up and down and then we can stay in second so i've got long arms <laughs> i'll go at an angle and do a small version so it's almost like ripples of a wave rippling water effect good and now let's just do some kind of plie rolling up through the point work just to get the legs moving. The solo consists mainly of bourrées, which um, in my opinion is one of uh, the most effective and also at the same time difficult um, maneuvers in classical ballet. That's it, just warming up the ankles and the legs to get high up on our hips. Good. I think I can take this off now. So let's begin, shall we? We're going to start in fifth position on point. I like to start with my arms up and as I'm coming onto the stage, they're lowering like as if a bird, if you saw a swan in the distance, landing in from a flight in my mind's eye. That's what I think is happening. So we begin. Foray, da, di, da, da, arms. Up and down, keep going. Then I like to get a little more exaggerated, pulsing there, and then I finish up. I'm crossing my wrist, I'm crossing my wings over. Then folding in and opening forward. So let me show that again. So we come on. Di da da bure and arms. You can do what you like with the head here. Pulse, pulse. You'll hear the urgency in the music there for a big one. Then crossing the wrist, inverting the hands. So from here, coming into you, opening your heart forward and then dropping the arms. They're doing a circle behind you, like an underdone circle to come up. So again, entrance. Ah, uh, inverting the hands. 
forward and then I collect everything. And in an ideal world, I can do that. Where I suspend for a moment in fifth before going to the right, boring to the right. And I like to have the right arm up a bit higher and the left arm's almost in the second position. Again, wrists, like as if there's water draping off your hand there, so it gives the illusion of a wing, a wing tip. So we bore to the right, then we're gonna switch our left foot in front, tombe, and then here's when we can get really creative. I like to do that, where I, I kind of nuzzle my head into my arm, like it's protecting me. And as I land into that fourth, then my left arm lifts, lifting under the elbow and then protecting my face and I'm trying to get the strength you'll hear it in the music to rise up to fifth so let's go back to the beginning again how about I put the music on and we can try it together just up until there with the music <laughs> showing um, I guess the the transition from life to to after through death right so life to death and it's done in such a poetic way that even though we're oh, falling because we don't have the strength anymore being ballerinas you know we have to get that left toe ready so it can take our weight almost in a hydraulic way like a poof, right so we don't want to clunk down because then the poetic essence is kind of shattered a little bit so what I like to think of there even though I'm in my swan world I need to tell my foot okay left toe get ready to catch my weight and I'm ever so slightly back if you can see that so I don't just fall straight onto my left foot I'm kind of leaving my weight in a diagonal behind me. And I also like to do that with my right arm so it drapes behind me a little bit. Again, interpretive moment for all of us. You can do what I did here, or you can just go all the way forward, gather the hands. You can do two drapes, to be honest, um, when I worked with Evelyn for an entire summer on this um, and then when I performed it it was actually a bit different each time that um, I came to the solo so sometimes for example I would collect that way other times I would get a little bit more oh in with my arm to my face and collect that way and sometimes I would come up onto point pushing through my arms and chest rising up and other times I would like this way to magically come back up onto point another tricky moment like we did the to tombe everyone coming back onto point really use that right foot it's it's like 
heavily like um, like the struggle that is happening within this solo, even though it's graceful and beautiful, there's an undercurrent of heaviness, of struggling, and that's that right toe, right toe into the ground, into the ground, come back into fifth. Good. So, recap. Entrance, and you hear there's quite a bit of music there, so live, live your best life, right? You can keep the head straight, you can show one side and then the other side. Then we fold in the arms, forward. Collect, and if we can, suspend for a breath, break to the right. Remember, weight slightly back as we gracefully tombe. Collect, heavy toe, up into fifth. Now, sec next section. We're gonna bore kind of to the right. And I like these arms to be a little, a little floaty. It's almost like when you dream, how you can see things, but it's not quite as articulate as in real life. So it's a dreamlike state with the arms flowing from the right to the left. And then drop, cross over the elbows and let the hands fall down. So we did right, booray, left, booray. Oh, it's almost like, like a giving up moment, side. Then we do another tombe, forward, but all the way to the knee. And as you can see, my arms opened up to the sky, and as I came down to the ground, they turned inverted they turned in so this is an iconic swan ballet open port bra come all the way down and just back with the left arm higher than the right arm so let's recap we did the heavy foot back into fifth and right bourree left bourree together Lock the hands, tombe all the way down and open. So it's very abandoned, it's very, it's quite cathartic actually this whole solo. Even though it doesn't really look like very much, it's very spiritual and every time you really open the arms and the hands, the chest is so vulnerable and it's like you're really just giving your heart out into the open. Another tricky moment, collect the foot. Now really sucking in the belly here. Again, like we're coming out of something gooey and heavy. Come back up to fifth. And your elegant swan arms, elegant swan arms. So how about we try that much with the music from the very beginning again, yeah? It's good, we're going section by section. Here we go.
Thanks for just following along. <laughs> so remember that tombe all the way down to the ground and opening the heart, head back. Again, up through the stomach, drawing up to fifth. Four eyes, bend. I turn around and I face the front completely and head is up. It's not necessarily the most like pretty ballet moment, but I think it's very honest. It's almost like a prayer up, like summoning something. So the hands, the palms are straight up. You don't have to worry about looking your prettiest, just really go for it. And then let the arms, the wings drop down. Sometimes I put my head to the right, sometimes to the left. I'm in fifth position. And then I do a little like comforting moment into my shoulder. Then on fifth position, turn around back to, uh, to have your back to the audience. Gorgeous to tournay. And when I'm having a good day, <laughs> I can do it so that the heels just pass and I don't bore. So even though the solo is made up of a lot of bourrées, what's also uh, breathtaking is the moment of stillness. So turning back to the audience, keep doing your swan arms. And like I was saying during the solo, from here, I like to go a little bit to the right arm and then to the left arm. So, you know, being pulled in different directions sort of sort of thing and then again swan arms finish at the end of that phrase into the silence with cross wrists like how we did kind of at the beginning before we did the unfolding moment yep so we finish that phrase cross wrists and again I like to not have a moment of stillness then after this sorry from here we're going to then Turn the arms under your opening and you're just going to bourree on the spot and you're just going to open your arms into a half circle, almost like you're holding the weight of the moon in your arms. And you back bend a little bit so the audience sees just the tip of your swan headpiece. So, arms da da di da 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 weight of the moon in my hands. Then I'm going to turn to my right, drop my right arm, just checking that I'm in the frame. Then I invert my left wrist and hand to meet it. And now I, it's like with this left hand, the underneath hand, I'm gonna push that wing. It's like the right wing ha is broken and doesn't have any strength left. And the left one's like, come on, Breathe, come on, and together. So, backtrack. Opening the arms, just bore on the spot. Three, four, turn to the right, then invert the left. Try to connect um, the, the wrist almost with the elbow there. And as I'm doing these I have to remember, my, my coach tells me in this moment, don't rush, don't rush. I don't know, I think I get too excited helping my other wing, but I have to remember to go slowly and heavy so that it can build into the next moment. So from here, bourree, bourree, passe into four, Again, like this moment pleading, it's almost the plead now onto diagonal and opening back into swan arm. So let's just think through from the very top, no music. Coming out onto the stage, appearing. Raise swan arms. You can do the small ripples if you wish or slow and big, it's up to you. But let's finish at the end, cross wrist, inverting the hands forward.
gather and breathe. Remember, this is that Tom base, so get ready to catch with that left toe, whatever you'd like to do here. And again, that back toe heavy to draw back up to fifth. Right arms and left arms and together. Open. I'm gonna have to grow back here because I have like this much space. Tombe all the way to the knee. Gather. And actually, when we open there, I think it's quite nice that if we can relax a little into the front of the hip. We don't want to go too far because then the next step becomes even more difficult. But it's nice if there's a little release. And then remember, gathering that toe, stomach in, drawing all the way up to fifth. That was a better one. Swan arms. Then face the front, pleading. And down, head. Gorgeous transition to the back of the audience, keep swanning, then going right, left, and together. Here comes the part where we hold the weight of the moon in our arms. Opening, da di da da, turning to the right, slow, brace slow, then to fourth with a passe, come back to fifth, open. Good. How about we try that much? I'm getting a bit warmer now, so that's good. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready to take my top off yet. Soon, soon. <laughs> back to the very beginning. I won't do all of it on point, because let's think through it. Here we go. <laughs>
felt good for just joining along. It's nice, sometimes you have to stop and explain, but then other times we learn just by kind of being taken on the journey of the music and the movement and so forth. So where did we get to? Oh, hands are cold. <laughs> um, we, so after the moon, and this fourth position bore. Again, I like to have a moment in fifth. And then like there's, uh, how can I explain? Like a moment where my hands separate and it happens in, in a moment where they separate and then it like kind of echoes. The movement continues as an echo. So rather than just open, that it's up. Go and it drapes. Now you're going to cross. So if I'm facing you, you're going to cross your elbows over your head. Iconic ballerina moment. And then I switch to the other side. So I normally go left and right. And sometimes after this, how about we drop to the right and turn around to the front with the right foot in front. And again, it's very very uh, vulnerable, honest moment by giving the, the inside part of the arm to the audience, which is not something that we normally do. You know, we're normally like this, this, but here's a chance to really, you know, you're, you're stripped down, you have nothing left to give. And then back to the moon is what I think, or away from the audience, you know, shying away, back up. And then just your classic, Swan, beautiful circular port de bras. And it's up to you if you like to keep the elbows in front of the body, in front of the body circles, or if you like to really keep them to the side. I know some people also like to take it behind them, which is also nice. So we get to play around with many different planes of the arm. So after we did the wrists, back, and again, explore your options of how you'd like to do your swan arms. And then they come down. So, uh, so from here, then I like to turn back to the front and I like to keep my gaze over the right um, area in front of me. And I'm folded over in fifth. And I like to do like a breath, almost like quiver quivering with my wings so instead of just up down it's like again signifying the final struggle to breathe and then elegantly bringing the left elbow up up final reach and my so i'm in fifth left arm up right arm to the side and my right toe is going to find the floor like that. So I'm in a lunge. Now I'm going to go down and I just put my left hand to the side. So don't, don't worry, the audience doesn't see it. Then my right wing folds over the foot, but it's not done yet. It's got some fight left in it. Keep going, keep going, reach up, 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 almost like you're gonna lift off your other leg, but you don't really, just almost, almost, and then let the energy go in the hand first. As we finish over the right leg, foot nicely sculpted, right um, palm up. And that's the end. So just details. Again, like we said, that quivering moment. And then that toe, 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 go, go. And then as we come in, coming at the very end of the solo, just keep it pulsing. See how it's keep, keep going. So from the back, this is coming down, circle with the elbow and the hand just keeps continuing. Keep it, keep it going, keep the motion going, keep the motion going. And then here, reaching up, up. 
I'm almost, almost quivering with my hand. Up, up, and then the last breath. So, shows in the fingers first, and then trickles down the arm into the body, and then we fold over at the end. Good. That was, okay, so that's kind of everything. How about we go from the top again? And I'll pick it up on point from the part where we cross our elbows and go left, right, and then continue facing the front. Yep. Yeah? So back to the top. And then let's go full out from that section. Perfect. to rush that last that last moment I get you know you get so worked up but really hold on to the very end that you can hear of that gorgeous cello up 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 let it go plong and that's that's the cue moment yep okay how about shake it out well for myself we'll try and do a little performance let's try and give it give it a go because um yeah, I think I, I gave as much 
detail with each step. Now it's up to you to um to really make it your own that's the beauty of the dying swan is that from ballerina to ballerina it's different like some people do um like a lot of a lot of these movements where they're down on the ground and they're like swooping with their arms so you're welcome to also like try some of those things too I know I discussed this with Evelyn. Um, even some of um, my versions, I was incorporating that, but then I, just for myself, I just decided to go a different way. I didn't want to make it um, too similar to Swan Lake, but I love when I see ballerinas do that version because it's extremely beautiful. And if that's how you feel the most in touch with the essence of the Dying Swan, then definitely go for that. So yeah, let's do a little bit of a, a performance and then maybe I can answer some questions afterwards. All right. Here we go.
It's actually really nice. I've never danced um, this variation outside before. And as you can tell, it's a really overcast day. And I don't know, it just really feels like I'm enveloped in this gray, white, I don't know, kind of like sky that's unusual to what we normally have. And you can see the beautiful trees. They almost stand out more against that overcast backdrop. And I can hear the birds and I know my neighbor was peeking out a little bit during the when we were giving the lesson part so we, got, we had an audience basically so how about I turn the comments on now since we've got uh, almost 10 more minutes all right how am I doing this do 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 turn on commenting and yeah just like hit me up people let me know. I'm seeing a lot of love hearts. Love the love hearts. I'll also make sure I save this and it will be on the National Ballet's Instagram for 24 hours. Um, again, if you missed the beginning, I'm Chelsea Meese, um, Ballerina Charles on Insta. And I just started a YouTube channel, so we can continue some stuff there as well. All right. Oh, here we go. Amazing. That was so awesome. Oh, Ballerina Katua. Yes. That's my good friend Tina and I'm wearing her gorgeous leotard, the Chelsea. Oh, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> I'm seeing some really nice, That thank you so much. Cause like I said, I worked back with Evelyn in 2018 on this and we did an intensive summer on Dying Swan, which was one of the highlights of my career so far. Uh, oh, I'm so moved, oh, thank you. And actually, after Evelyn, after I performed it, after working with Evelyn, um, uh, a gentleman called Kieran West, who was a dancer with Hamburg Ballet and is now the um, videographer and photographer, made a beautiful film of me dancing this version. I can't show it yet, but I don't know. I just I feel very connected to this solo, and that's also why I wanted to share it. It's something that you don't need a lot of space for and at the same time it has so much history and connection to the ballet world um and you know quintessential it, it's it's the solo that the ballerinas do all around the world so it's really fills us up yes beautiful music uh from carnival of the animals camille saint san i believe oh definitely google it don't quote me there oh yes Hi Jennifer, Lauren, Fain and Rory. Loved this. Oh, how do I keep fit? Um, gosh, I know, right? <laughs> I do um, ballet class every day with the National Ballet and also some coaches that I have that I work privately with. Um, we also have Pilates with Jayanne Salas from Articular Bodies. She keeps us in tip top shape. Uh, Rue Strong, Rue Huang, you can find her also on Instagram. Um, she gives us like a lot of kind of like hit style intensive workouts. I mean, we're all kind of facing the same struggles, right? Some days are really inspiring. Other days it's more of like a rest day. <laughs> um, but definitely getting ready for this lesson with you guys really got me back into more of a, a mental state of what, what you get into when you're preparing a role, you know, you like for the last couple of days I was just like living and breathing this music and and not just the steps but you know where I want my gaze to be and um just just kind of all those like good good things that we how you get lost in the world of dance basically I guess is what I'm saying I'm also teaching a ton oh my goodness I'm teaching almost every day from youngins right through to adults and that keeps me in shape too because I have to prepare each class. I have to make sure it's, you know, level appropriate. I'm also demonstrating the classes. Um, so that's, that also keeps me from just sitting on the couch the whole time. <laughs> the sadness of this piece feels appropriate with all the feelings in the situation. Actually, Sharon Elizabeth, you're bang on. So again, I could speak metaphorically about this piece all day, but I can see the clock ticking and I can't. Um, there's so many parallels between this solo and what we're going through, you know, being trapped 
working through difficult times, transition from life to death, transition from our old life to now, that's going into be the new life, which is unknown. You know, we have no idea what the next, you know, year will bring. And so it's really nice to find a movement dance piece that can encapsulate, you know, what you feel in real life. And it's, I don't know, it's like I said before, it's cathartic. I was like super tired just physically, but also emotionally and yeah you're really stripped down there's there's no there's no facade with this solo as much as it looks so elegant and beautiful there really there really isn't any fakeness going on and that was the first time you've been on the sure. yeah also that yeah my husband who's amazing gabriel fain who set up everything for us he just said that's the first time you've been on point in a while <laughs> what's your instagram name oh my instagram name is ballerina underscore chels you can also find me if you um you know just type in my name chelsea meese on instagram as well it should come up but it's ballerina underscore chels on instagram and on youtube it's just chelsea meese thank you thank you oh yes point your emoticon um yeah showing the detail i think is really important um Anything else? I know Gabriel's... What do you do to get this vulnerability and expressiveness in your dancing? <sighs> practice <laughs> at the end of the day, guys. Oh my goodness. It really just comes down to practice. Um, I completely trust um, Evelyn Hart who passed on this knowledge to me and that's also what's amazing about the dance community and world is we have a tradition and heritage of passing from one great onto the next generation onto the next you know you don't just learn this from a book yes there's texts on ballet and positions alignment but it's 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 a true art form where it's passed down and and I had Evelyn who I mean She's one of the greatest, arguably one of the greatest ballerinas, and I'm so lucky to have her here in Canada to give the time to work one-on-one -on -one because, again, like practice, it really takes time to develop things to... Um, she always tells me, like, you know, almost... Not that you're going to bring your hand into you, but instead of doing this way, which I also do I demonstrated today, that there's this way to really almost bring the elbows in and drop, in and drop, in and drop. It creates, I think, a bit more magnitude in the wingspan. Also studying, just like watch swans. I mean, they're in like full attack mode sometimes, but just whatever you're dancing, definitely watch, watch other people, watch other ballerinas. There's so much stuff now on Instagram, which is amazing. It's so accessible to so many people up close that you wouldn't normally get that opportunity to have so just again just like kind of learning a new language learning a new skill just just being kind of enveloped in it any habits that you've picked up in quarantine that you might keep afterwards definitely teaching teaching has been the number one habit so i i did teach before but because of my schedule it was very sporadic it was it would normally be at summer intensive that's when i would really be able to commit myself to teaching but now I, like I said, I'm almost teaching every day, whether it's private lessons or teaching students at the Go Academy or my wonderful adults on Thursday nights in studio, people, if you're available, Thursdays, five to six, um, and one-on-one -on -one lessons that I do. So again, like I said earlier, I have to plan my classes. I have to think through what's, what's the goal, what's the objective for this class, for this group or this one individual. And um, I have to um, kind of wear different hats for that as well, because when I'm when I'm teaching younger students, obviously I'm speaking and demonstrating in a different way than when I'm working with my adult um, classes. So that's probably the biggest habit. Is there anything else? Gabriel's on Instagram, like being my agent back here, helping me. That's good. I think that's awesome. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you liked it. Um, you know, the National Ballet are always putting out amazing content and all different, you know, Q&As with the dancers and Bake With Us and classes, obviously. And this is the first variation class. So if you liked it, definitely give feedback to them and let them know. And I'm sure 
there'll be more of my amazing colleagues, you know, doing wonderful, wonderful things here on Insta Live again. So everyone stay happy and healthy. That's the main thing. <laughs> Take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and um, yeah, just stay in touch. So bye guys. All right, now I need to make save sure I it. save it. So I end first and then save. Oh gosh, sorry guys. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm scared to end it. I'm just okay. Oh my word. <laughs>